thank you, Ahmad. Lots of new places to get involved this week. So next up, I am very happy to introduce someone who has been elected to the user committee not once, but twice. Uh, he's also involved in a lot of different projects in the community. Today, he's going to talk about Open Lab, which is very strategic to us on that testing and integration front. So please welcome Melvin Hilsman. Thanks so much for that warm welcome. We like to say that Open Lab is a place where everybody can play. Play in all its rich variety is one of the highest achievements of the human species alongside language, culture, and technology, says Dr. David Whitebread of the University of Cambridge. When I attended my first OpenStack Summit, what I found most interesting above all was that I should attend the Upstream University. And when I went there, <laughs> there were Legos all over the place. And what I remember most was having fun with my team, putting these Legos together as a way to reinforce our learning about OpenStack being an integration of individual projects. You know, Aristotle is coined with creating the, uh, the phrase, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The word team is often broken into an acronym to mean together everyone achieves more. And it's through this idea of achieving and specifically achieving more through integration that OpenLab was born. So these are the companies who helped to seed OpenLab. But as was mentioned earlier, we know that open source is more than just logos. So we had some individuals from a number of different projects who all got together as well. And we had this idea that you know, users weren't necessarily concerned about servers and VMs and containers, as Jonathan mentioned in the Sydney keynote, but that they were more concerned about services. And so it was through this you know, we thought about, OK, what's an integration that we could try out? We had a pretty good idea of a few of them, but none more obvious than Terraform, Kubernetes, and OpenStack. It was not that OpenStack and Kubernetes did not work at all, but here's essentially what we knew. In future Kubernetes releases, all cloud controller managers will be developed outside of the core Kubernetes project managed by SIG leads and cloud vendors. And so the Kubernetes community essentially understood that these cloud providers, their development and release cadences were different. And so it made sense to pull the cloud provider code outside of the core of Kubernetes. And so again, we had found a common use case. We had folks across different communities willing to come together and collaborate. We understood the required technology. And we had a playground that we could test everything end to end. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Mohammed Nasser so he can give us a little bit of an idea of the progress we made since Sydney. Hey, Mohammed. Hi. Thank you very much, Melvin. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Nasser. I'm the uh, CEO at Vexhost. Uh, we're a private, public, and uh, hybrid uh, OpenStack cloud provider based out of Montreal, Canada. So I'd like to welcome everyone again to Canada once again. Um, inside the community, I'm part of the OpenStack Technical Committee, um, as well as I've been a longtime contributor and uh, an operator for OpenStack. Um, so today we're talking about infrastructure and open infrastructure. And for us, we're a very big supporter inside the OpenStack community, and we think it's important to support um, any projects and community initiatives that help uh, the ecosystem grow. Uh, uh, you know, specifically with OpenStack and the ecosystem around it. And so OpenLab is one of those initiatives that uh, was very interesting for us to contribute to. So we um, started by donating resources to the project so that they can use it to run some of the continuous integration uh, that they do. So talking about open infrastructure today, um, we all leverage these APIs to solve all sorts of interesting problems uh, using software. Uh, we had the announcement today with uh, Zool going up, and Zool has, has allowed you know, the OpenStack community to do all sorts of CI testing, but also the OpenLab community to do CI testing, and that's all because of the open APIs. We talk about integration with softwares like Kubernetes um, and the cloud provider that you know, Melvin just spoke about. And so software has you know, allowed us to do a lot, but at the very core, software needs hardware to run beneath it. And so hardware is just as important when we're talking about open infrastructure. And for a very long time, x86 has been the predominant way of really running infrastructure. However, 
ARM is a very other interesting option that allows for much, you know, very other interesting use cases um, for things that we'll discuss later and, and show off in a demo. So uh, thanks to uh, the contributions by Lenaro into the OpenStack community, which has allowed, um, allowed the OpenStack community to have access to uh, making the projects work inside ARM, as well as contributions from uh, ARM and Cavium in terms of hardware in order to allow for these uh, projects to operate successfully under ARM. And so I think that you know, this has also enabled OpenLab to do multi-architecture testing inside of our public cloud through the resources that were uh, provided. Exactly, yeah, so ch let's check out this demo of that. Sure, so what I have here is we're going to do a very quick demo. I have a three node Kubernetes cluster running inside of our public cloud, and that Kubernetes cluster is using uh, multi-architecture. We have three instances here inside um, this cloud one instance is running ARM, and the other instance is running x86, as you see here. Now, so just to kind of demonstrate and show off that there really is, this is kind of a clean slate um, tenant or project, we can go into volumes, and we'll see that there's not going to be any other volumes other than the one that is allocated for these virtual machines. And then if we hop in quickly into load balancers, we're going to see that uh, there is no load balancers. So I'm going to hop in quickly into the server here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this deployment of a very simple WordPress application. But I want us to look you know, further than that and really evaluate how you can bring this into maybe your own use cases. So reading through this uh, file very quickly, so we see that we have a persistent volume claim. So a lot of applications you know, want to be stateless, but there will always be stateful applications. And one of them is a database server. And in this case, we're using a persistent volume to store the, the information for the database server, in this case, for the WordPress application. Now, the other thing I'd like to point out to is we're using the node selector um, in order to make the database server run inside x86. And going down further, we're running the WordPress web workers to be using ARM. And so this is an example where you can use different architectures for different use cases within the same cluster. And then finally, the last thing is exposing the service to the internet and making it easy to be accessible, whether internally or externally. And so we have a service of type load balancer. And this service of type load balancer will use the Kubernetes uh, cloud provider for OpenStack to automatically create all these resources for us. So we're going to hop back in here to the dashboard. And if we go into volumes, we'll be able to see a volume that was automatically created using the Kubernetes cloud provider that is hosting the uh, database. And if we go back to network and load balancers, we'll see that a load balancer has been created that is running right now. And if we just dive in right here, we see that it's using the Octavia provider. And there's a floating IP here. But the integration goes all the way. So if I go back here and I get the list of services running inside this cluster, we see that the external IP is exposed here. So we can just copy this and toss it into a browser window and there we go. We have just deployed an application on multiple architectures inside uh, a single Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack. Yeah, what's, what's very exciting about this, right, is that this integration, um, I'm sure some in the audience as well as myself are now interested in going out and adding more tools and applications and services, even though this was a very simple and straightforward one, right? So there's many use cases that are now available. Yeah, absolutely. So this introduces a whole set of interesting use cases. Um, you know, lots of new technologies coming up, such as ONAP, and some very interesting use cases, maybe using different architectures to run your VNFs and having your control plan on a different architecture. You know, we announced also Zool today, and Zool can leverage this type of thing in order to be able to deploy and maybe do gating for a project both on x86 and ARM. And so really, all these use cases are, you know, possibilities, but the real use case that we were able to demonstrate today is really deploying a fully conformant multi-architecture Kubernetes cluster on top of our public cloud using 100% upstream code. So, so what I think is very important for us to do what you just said is take a second and think about this is that we're, ta we're not talking about this as a pie in the sky thing that we could possibly do tomorrow. But through the great work of OpenLab and partners like Vexos, we're talking about right now, if you use this, you have a fully conformant multi-architecture cloud that's utilizing, as you can see here, OpenStack that's passing a Kubernetes conformance test. And so you can use it today. And then when Kubernetes 1.11 and above comes out, just go ahead and move right to it as expected. 
Yeah, and, and once again, we'd like to extend a huge thank you to Armin Cavium, who have been very gracious in order in providing hardware for us to build this sort of thing, and the Lenaro team, who has uh, put up very countless amount of contributions upstream uh, to the OpenStack community in order to enable all of us to get access to all this technology. All right. So yeah, so here's a few links that uh, the cloud provider OpenStack, as I mentioned, is there. It's available. Also, this demo, you can go online and pull this demo up and try it out yourself or modify it a little bit. And what's great is we have the OpenStack Passport cloud, public cloud passport program here with partners like Vexhost and others. You can try this out in an actual real environment. And finally, I would, uh, we would encourage you all to go to openlabtesting.org and go ahead and click on Get Started to test out your own applications and tools or click on Support and support Open Lab in any way you feel uh, compelled to. So thank you all again for your time and attention. Thank you very much, everyone.